right, Dale, let's talk a little bit about chickpeas now, uh, also known as garbanzo beans. Some people would be more familiar with them in that uh, terminology. Uh, these, there, there's two types of chickpeas. There's, there's kabuli types, which are the very large seeded ones that you'd often find on a salad bar. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, the big bean on there. And then these are what's called the desi type. And again, it's the small seed that we're after for cover crops. And so we typically have only ever used the desi types, mainly because of that seed size issue. From, from a plant growth standpoint, there's not a lot of difference there. Uh, so, you know, chickpeas, they're not going to be a real growthy plant like, like what we saw with the peas. Uh, but there's, there's some good growth here, uh, some good nitrogen fixing potential. And the thing that I like about these chickpeas, probably better than any of the other spring planted legumes, is they do tend to have more heat tolerance as they grow deeper into the season. So that probably wouldn't be my first choice if it's something that I know I'm going to be terminating May 15th. But if it's something that I'm going to let grow out into June and even into the first part of July, uh, I would certainly look at putting these chickpeas in because they're going to tolerate that summer heat better than any of the other cool season spring planted legumes. Yeah. Um, and one thing that some people are investigating is companion planting mm -hmm. uh, or, or where you plant two different crops together and, and then harvest them together and and then separating the seed later. Um, this is a, a legume that some people are doing that with. They're uh, planting with oats or, or planting it with spring triticale. Flax, flax is flax, another one. barley, uh, uh, spring barley, and, and separate them out, out after harvest. Or if they're used as a feed crop, just feed them together. Just feed sure. them together. And uh, you get a uh, phenomenon called over yielding where if you have 50% of the composition as chickpeas, 50% as oats, uh, you get a 75% crop of each typically. And so your land use efficiency just goes up. And then you have fewer weeds, you have fewer insect problems, you have fewer disease problems. And, and you've hedged your bets with that diversity. Yeah. We, we've used it in our cover crops a lot, but we're just starting to tap into it with grain crops now and seeing some of the same results yeah. that we've seen with cover crops. And, and a lot of the chickpeas and the flax that we do buy and sell as cover crop seed have been grown together and then separated. Uh, chickpeas cost more than, than like the 4010 forage peas uh, for a couple of reasons. Number one, uh, we're competing against people eating these things. This, these desi chickpeas are typically ground into hummus uh, and people eat it. So we're competing against that human edible uh, market for these things. But the other thing is, is that these things are very susceptible to a lot of diseases, especially ascotida and other things like that. That and, and so you can't, you know, they're they're difficult to grow for good seed production as you move east and you're wetter and you have more humid conditions. So you don't typically see a lot of these grown in the wetter areas. Uh, but maybe you know, if it's mixed with the flax or another crop, you you kind of limit some of, the, of that diseases. Uh, but they're a little more expensive, but again, uh, as part of your crop, I, again, I would never plant these solid seeded. I wouldn't plant any of these as a single cover crop. Uh, but again, it makes a nice companion crop out there, uh, especially if it's going to be growing into the heat a little bit yeah. more. Yeah, gives you some additional diversity.